Hello and welcome to this video which is the introduction to migrating from Windows Server 2003 to Windows Server 2012. This video is just going to highlight the lab environment so it'll be a very quick introduction of what all the subsequent videos will actually uh, use for the demonstrations of the different migration scenarios. Obviously, this is a very hot topic at the moment because the 15th of July 2015 Windows Server 2003 will no longer be supported and not that doesn't just mean you won't get security updates from uh, Microsoft, but it also means a lot of software vendors will stop supporting their product on your platform. It will also mean you will no longer have compliance. So if you've got a compliant requirement within your business, Windows Server 2003 will not fulfill that requirement anymore. As normal, um, I have my contact details on the screen, so please feel free to email me, uh, follow me on Twitter, or um, uh, look at further videos within my YouTube channel. So, so this is a video series, obviously this is the first of the videos. Um, there will be four more videos. Um, the first one looking at actually migrating Active Directory and DNS to Windows Server 2012. So we'll do this using a, a rolling migration type model. Now, a lot of people, even if they've migrated from Active Directory from 2003 to 2008 and then maybe even on to, to 2012, uh, they haven't actually migrated the system volume. Um, so the system volume is still using the old file replication service which isn't as reliable uh, it isn't as efficient as using DFS and with Windows Server 2012 R2 DFSR is effective, effectively the sort of you know gold standard for replicating the system volume and it's something that you've really got to think about migrating towards if you're not doing it already and the reason for that is because with the file replication service it is now a depreciated feature in Windows Server 2012 R2 so it's unlikely F FRS is actually going to be uh, available to you in the next release of Windows so it's something that needs to happen um, in everyone's networks regardless of really where their their source environments from. We'll then look at migrating DHCP in video number four and then we will look at uh, a basic file server migration so as I say, this is a precursor to all the other videos because really what I wanted to do was just highlight what the lab environment looks like. So the lab environment uh, above the line is the Windows Server 2003 R2 systems. Below the line are the destination systems which are going to be running Windows Server 2012. So QADC01, QADC02 represent the domain controllers that are running all the domain controller services for uh, the, the network as it is under Windows Server 2003. DC01 is actually running all the FSMO roles as well, and DC02 is also my DHCP server for my network. Uh, QA FSO1, pretty straightforward, is a file server, so that's going to be the file server machine that we will migrate. And we then effectively have corresponding systems below the line, which are going to be the destination. So QA DC03 is effectively going to take over all the roles for QA DC01. DC04 is going to take over all the roles, including DHCP, for DC02. And obviously QAFSO2 will take over the file server role for the, uh, the 2003 based file server. And all the destination servers are running Windows Server 2012 R2. In terms of the, the model that I'm going to use, effectively I'm going to migrate and uh, erase. So effectively QADC01, QADC02 and QAFSO1 will not be brought back online. Obviously in the real world, you might decide that you want to repurpose that hardware if it's on hardware. Um, so you might actually end up, for example, migrating to a couple of 2012 R2 domain controllers and then actually use some of the 2003 hardware by reinstalling it and actually um, migrating or installing them as domain controllers again. And that's perfectly feasible and possible. In my instance, I'm, I'm actually not going to do that. You'll also see on the right hand side that we do have a workstation, so QA WS01. This workstation is there obviously to test the migration. So we'll be able to ensure that you know we can still log in, uh, group policies are still being applied, um, we can still access the resource in the file server, and of course we can um, get an IP address from the DHCP server. Just one word of sort of uh, to highlight the configuration which is sort of certainly not real world in my environment, is my DHCP server is allocating addresses every five minutes. So my leases are very short, so we should actually see the state of the client change uh, quite quickly. So this really just covers that video and just gives us that quick introduction into what my uh, lab environment's going to be to try and demonstrate the features that I'm gonna demonstrate. 
As always, please feel free to stay, stay in touch, uh, send me emails, follow me on Twitter, uh, look at the other videos in my YouTube channel. Also, if there's um, a migration path that you would like to see, then please feel free to actually email me and I'll see if I can um, produce a, a video highlighting that particular migration scenario. Hope you find these videos useful. Thank you very much.